Our next system is the cooling system, cooling system of a reciprocating engine. As we all are aware that combustion takes place in the engine, the fuel and air mixture is uh, ignited inside the engine cylinders. Due to this combustion, a lot of heat is generated. Because of this heat, all the parts in the engine are subjected to very high temperatures. So, in order to have efficient functioning of these parts of the engine as a whole, cooling of the engine and these parts is required. So, let us see what the cooling system of a reciprocating engine is all about. The fuel-air combustion within the cylinders produces intense heat, most of which is expelled along with the exhaust gases through the exhaust system. So, as just now I had said that due to combustion, a lot of heat is produced in the engine cylinders. This heat, most of this heat, most of the heat produced is exhausted out of the system along with the exhaust gases. Still, some heat is left in the system. That remaining heat must be removed or dissipated to prevent the engine from overheating. So, this heat which is left has to be removed or it has to be dissipated so that the engine does not overheat. Now, there are problems associated with high temperatures. Let us see what are the problems that we may encounter due to these, this high temperature. So, extremely high engine temperatures can result in the following problems, loss of power, excessive oil consumption, detonation and serious engine damage. So, Extremely high temperatures can result in loss of power. We may lose power during flight. There may be excessive oil consumption. Your oil consumption may increase. Detonation, we will study about detonation in our further slides and severe damage. So, these are the problems which we may encounter due to very high temperatures. Aircraft engines need some form of cooling to avoid damage to the engine. So, in order to avoid these problems, some form of cooling is required to avoid damage to the engine. The heat generated by the combustion process is only put to work partially and rest will warm the engine and must be directed away through some form of cooling system. So, the heat generated due to combustion is converted to power partially only and rest of the heat is warming the engine and it needs to be directed away from the engine through some form of cooling. Most commonly used piston aircraft engines have some sort of air cooling, but there are some types that are using a liquid cooling system only or a combination of both. So, some of the engines, some of the reciprocating engines are using air cooling, some are using liquid cooling and there are engines which are using a combination of both air cooling and liquid cooling. The oil system is vital to the internal cooling of the engine. An additional method of cooling is necessary for the engine's external surface. Most small aircrafts are air cooled, although some are liquid cooled. So, the oil system, the lubrication system, it is very important for internal cooling of the engine. So, the engine internal cooling is being done by the oil system, by the lubricants. But an additional method of cooling is also required for cooling the external surface of the engine. So, as we have seen above that some engines are using air cooling, some are using liquid cooling and some are using a combination of both air and liquid cooling. Now, coming to air cooling system, what is an air cooling system? Air cooling is accomplished by air flowing into the engine compartment through openings in front of the engine cowling. So, as you can see in the diagram, See the air, this air, there is an opening in front of the cowling. This cowling is the cover which is surrounding the engine. It is in an aerodynamic shape and this cowling, in front of the cowling, there is an opening through which the air is coming inside the engine. So, air cooling is accomplished by air flowing into the engine compartment. So, this air is flowing into the engine compartment through openings in front of the engine cowling. So, this this side there is an opening 
the opening is also designed in such a way that you have an aerodynamic effect you have a ram effect and this is used for cooling the engine baffles route this air over fins attached to the engine cylinders and other parts of the engine where the air absorbs the engine heat now inside the cowling inside this engine around the engine you have baffles and flexible seats so these baffles are used to route the air this air which is coming inside over fins attached to the engine cylinders so uh, we have seen that this engine cylinders have got fins over them so this air is routed over the fins and other parts of the engine so that the air absorbs the engine heat this hot air is routed out through one or more openings in the lower aft portion of the engine cowling now we have seen there is an opening here air is coming from this side there are baffles inside and these baffles they direct the air over the fins of the cylinders and now this air is routed out of the system through one or more openings which are there in the lower portion lower aft portion of the cowling so you see in the diagram the air is coming this side it is cooling the entire engine the entire system and is being routed out through these openings at the aft bottom portion of the engine cowling the outside air enters the engine compartment through an inlet behind the propeller hub so this is your propeller here just behind the propeller hub there is an opening we have just discussed the air enters through this opening baffles direct it to the hottest part of the engine now there are baffles inside these baffles will direct the air the cooling air to the hottest part of the engine cylinders primarily the cylinders in fact the hottest part in the engine are the cylinders so the air is being directed over the cylinders and these cylinders have fins that increase the area exposed to the air flow these cylinders they have fins which increase the area which is exposed to the air flow and this aids in cooling the cylinders the air cooling system is less effective during ground operations take offs go arounds and other periods of high power low air speed operation now this air cooling system this air cooling method is less effective during ground operations during take offs go arounds and other periods of high power low air speed operation so this air cooling system has a disadvantage further in case of high speed descents they provide excess air and can shock cool the engine this is another disadvantage that in case if you are descending uh, in a high speed that will provide excess air and it can shock cool the engine subjecting it to abrupt temperature fluctuations so there might be there might be abrupt temperature fluctuations due to shock cooling of the engine and that happens in case you are descending at a very high speed and the engine is having excess air here you can see in the diagram this is one cylinder you can see the fins here and these are your baffles you can see the baffles and on top of the baffles you have the flexible seats so now the cowling and baffles are designed to force air over the cylinder cooling fins we will see in a further slides how this air is being directed but here in this diagram you can see this air is being directed over the cylinder around the fins because of these baffles and deflectors and the seal this cowling and baffles they are designed to force air over the cylinder cooling fins the baffles direct the air close around the cylinders and prevent it from from forming hot pools of stagnant air see in this diagram now this is your inlet this is your upper cowling this is your lower cowling and this is how the air is being directed over the cylinders the baffles direct the air close around the cylinders and prevent it from forming hot pools of stagnant air so the air is routed and in such a way that hot stagnant air that is avoided so that the air doesn't get stagnant here in this portion and it gets it comes from this side and goes through the bottom portion outside the system so in this diagram you can see these are your baffles they are metallic 
structures metallic sheets aluminium sheets and on top of that you can see this colored thing this is your flexible seal so you have the baffles and the seal so a system of rigid aluminium baffles and flexible baffle seals create a chamber of high pressure above the cylinders so this system of metallic aluminium baffles and flexible seals over the aluminium they create a chamber of high pressure above the cylinders so this system will create a chamber of high pressure above the cylinders and another chamber of low pressure below the cylinders and behind the engine so there are two chambers formed one is high pressure over the cylinders and one is low pressure below the cylinders and behind the engine they seal the gap on top of the engine to pressurize the air so this baffle and the flexible seal along with the cowling the top portion of the cowling cowling they seal the gap on top of the engine to pressurize the air so that the air gets pressurized now this flexible seal will seal the gap between the upper cowling and the engine and thus the air will be pressurized over the cylinders the baffles and seals of an engine compartment form a channel that is designed to transport air from one location to another along a prescribed route see in one of this diagram you can see how the air is ambient air you can see these yellow arrows this is ambient air coming from the front how this is channelized and this air this is extracting heat from the engine and then the warm engine the exhaust air goes out of the system the hot air goes out of the system so the baffles and seals of an engine compartment they form a channel that is designed to transport air from one location to another along a prescribed route so the air is following a prescribed route a route is formed and the air is channelized so that it the ambient air enters inside and extracts the heat from the engine system and is sent overboard outside the duct funnels ram air through the engine compartment and back out into the slip stream cooling down heating heat sensitive components in the process now this duct this will funnel the ram air inside we have just now discussed that this ram air will come inside the engine compartment and will get back out of the slips out into the slip stream and it in the process it will cool down all the heat sensitive components of the system now when an aircraft is flying air enters the cowling and is slowed in the plenum formed by the cowling engine baffles and seals so here in this diagram you can see this is your air intake air is coming inside the inside the cowling these are your rigid metal baffles you can see thick black lines this indicates your rigid sheet metal baffles and on top of that you have the flexible baffle seals these are your flexible baffle seals so when your aircraft is flying air enters the cowling the air is entering the cowling and is slowed in the plenum formed by the cowling engine baffles and seals so this is your cowling the, these baffles and the flexible seals they provide a sealed chamber the effect creates a static or high pressure area above the engine and a low pressure area below the cylinders and behind the engine so this air is entering from the intake and is creating a high pressure area over the cylinders and a low pressure area below the cylinders and at the aft portion of the engine since gases move from high pressure to low pressure we all know that the gases will be moving from high pressure to the low pressure the air then flows down through the cylinders so since you have high pressure over the cylinders and low pressure below the cylinders the gases will be moving from high pressure area to low pressure through the cylinders and across the oil cooler to the low pressure areas below and behind the engine cooling air flow is top to bottom and not front to back so this cooling air flow is coming from top to bottom since we have the high pressure area on the top and low pressure area at the bottom so the air is flowing from top to bottom bottom and not from front to back the air exits the cowling through cowl flaps 
Now you can see here you have the cowl flaps here. The air exits. Now this air since it is coming from top side to the bottom side and this air is going out through the cowl flaps or other flaring openings carrying away excess heat. So it is carrying away excess heat. Cowl flaps modulate the cooling by regulating the vacuum in the low pressure area below the cylinders. So these cowl flaps, these cowl flaps, they modulate the cooling by regulating the vacuum in the low pressure area. So these cowl flaps when they open, they are creating the vacuum, they are regulating the vacuum in the low pressure area below the cylinders. The volume of cooling airflow that passes across the cylinders is a function of the pressure differential between the upper high pressure chamber and the low pressure chamber of the engine compartment. Now as we know that there is high pressure on top and low pressure at the bottom on the lower side. So the volume of airflow, the volume of airflow which is going through the engine is a function of the pressure differential, the pressure differential between the, the difference of pressure between the upper chamber and the lower chamber. So this pressure differential is responsible for the volume of cooling airflow coming inside the engine. Cowl flaps are often used to modulate the cooling airflow. So we have just now seen that cowl flaps, they will modulate the cooling airflow. Opening the cowl flaps reduces the air pressure in the lower chamber. Now when the cowl flaps are opened, this will further reduce the pressure in the lower chamber. Thus the pressure differential between the upper and the lower area increases and resulting in the volume of cooling air that passes vertically across the cylinder fins. So because when the cowl flaps open, there is increased pressure differential and because of this increased pressure differential, more volume of air will come inside the engine and it will, more volume of air will cool the engine. The pressure differential between the upper and lower chamber is remarkably small. Although this pressure differential is very small between the upper and the lower chamber, but still this pressure differential is helpful in getting more volume of air flow in the inside the cowling. Because the pressure differential on which engine cooling depends is very small, even small leaks in the system of baffles and seals can have a serious adverse impact on the engine cooling. Now, since the pressure differential between the upper portion and the lower portion is very small, so any leak in the system of baffles or seals, it can have a serious impact on the engine cooling. So any leak in these baffles or seals will leak the air which is coming inside and there will be insufficient cooling of the cylinders. Any missing, broken or improperly positioned baffles or seals will degrade engine cooling by providing an alternative path for air to pass from the upper chamber to the lower chamber without flowing vertically across the cylinder cooling fins. So any leak in the system, any broken part, any missing part or impro improperly positioned baffle or seal, it will provide a path to the air to leak and thus the air will not go from top to bottom, it will not flow over the cylinders and it will not result in efficient cooling. The most trouble prone part of the cooling system is the system of flexible baffle seals. Now here you can see in the diagram metallic fittings, they are your baffles over the cylinder you can see and on top of these metallic baffles you have the flexible baffle seals. Now we are talking about these flexible baffle seals, they are the most trouble prone part of the cooling system. These flexible stri strips, they are usually high temperature silicon rubber. They are used to seal up the gaps between the sheet metal baffles and the cowling. So over, over this, you have the cowling over this engine. So in order to seal the gap between these baffles and the cowling, these 
flexible baffle seals are used and these flexible baffle seals are made of high temperature silicon rubber the seals must curve up and forward into the high pressure chamber so that the air pressure differential presses the seals tightly against the cowling so these seals they must curve up into the high pressure chamber so that the pressure differential presses the seals tightly against the cowling if the seals are permitted to curve away from the high pressure area when closing up the cowling in flight they can blow away from the cowling and permit large amounts of air to escape without doing any cooling so we see that apart from these rubber seals it is very important that these seals they curve up into the high pressure chamber in case if they curve up away from the high pressure area then the air will blow away from the cowling and permit large amount of air to escape without doing any cooling seals may develop wrinkles or creases when the cowling is installed preventing them from sealing air tight against the cowling and allowing air to escape so these seals these flexible seals they may have wrinkles these flexible seals they may have wrinkles or creases when the cowling is installed and thus it will prevent them from sealing air tight against the cowling and will allow air to escape it is important to look carefully for such problems each time the cowling is removed and replaced and especially important when new seals have been installed so it is a very important part of inspection to look for these flexible rubber seals that and the curve whether they are being they are curved into the high pressure area another thing inter cylinder baffles now the baffles between the two cylinders you can see in this diagram there are two cylinders adjacent to each other and in between them there you have a baffle so the inter cylinder baffles are also very important in air cooling system so these inter cylinder baffles they are also very important these are small oddly shaped pieces of sheet metal mounted below and between the cylinders so these are sheet metals mounted below and between the cylinders so in between the two cylinders these are mounted their purpose is to force the down flowing cooling air to wrap around and cool the bottom of the cylinders rather than just cooling the top and sides so in order to ensure that the bottom of the cylinders is also cooled so these inter cylinder baffles they force the down flowing cooling air to wrap around and cool the bottom of the cylinders rather than just cooling the top and sides so this inter cylinder baffle this is cooling the lower portion or the bottom portion of the cylinders also now let us see what are the problems with faulty baffles and seals faulty or improperly performing baffles and seals like a leaky duct are inefficient and apt to cause damage so you can see here in the diagram this is this is your al aluminum metal plate which is the baffle on top of the baffle baffle you have the flexible rubber seal and on top of that you can see this is your upper portion of the cowling the engine cowling now this side you can see there is an opening here so this provides a path for air to leak and we see that faulty or improperly performing baffles and seals they are like a leaky duct and they provide inefficient cooling and can cause further damage common engine problems related to faulty baffles and seals include abnormally high cylinder head temperatures now when you are not having sufficient cooling the problems that may be encountered are high cylinder head temperatures sticking walls and spark plug overheating so some of the problems high cylinder head temperatures sticking walls and spark plug overheating if the baffles are broken or misshapen the deformity can reduce the volume of air passing some or all of the cylinder now if these baffles they are broken or they are misshaped then your air is will sufficient air will not 
flow over the cylinders and it means that less than expected cooling for the cylinders or for the oil cooler now since sufficient cooling is not happening air is leaking from this opening so you will have less than expected cooling of the cylinders or the oil cooler if the seals are not in good condition or are not properly adjusted air can bleed up and reduce the static pressure slowing the flow of cooling air and increasing engine temperatures now if the seals are not in good condition seals when we say that these flexible seals they are not in good condition and are not properly adjusted now air can bleed up air will bleed up through the leak through the openings and it will reduce the static pressure it will reduce the static pressure the high pressure above which is formed over the cylinders it will reduce that pressure slowing the flow of cooling air because of that your flow of cooling air will be slowed and resulting in insufficient cooling and finally increasing the engine temperature so we can see that just a small opening just a small opening small leak in the engine baffle can cause so much of problem if cooling air is not adequately contained and directed hot spots which promote a lead or carbon build up upon the wall guides can occur potentially leading to wall sticking problems during startup now if the cooling air is not contained and directed then the hot spots may be there on the cylinders that they can lead to carbon build up on the wall guides and can lead to wall sticking during engine start a stuck wall most of the time ends up bending a push rod so in case if your walls are stuck they can finally result in bending of push rods in the figure you can see some of the push rods that were bent you can see some of the examples how badly they can be bent and bending of these push rods will cause an oil leak but can also cause a large reduction in engine power and expensive damage to crankcase other problems with insufficient cooling include overheating the spark plug barrels now insufficient cooling you can see this is your spark plug place where your spark plug is fitted so insufficient cooling can overheat the spark plug barrel a problem that will deteriorate your ignition leads and boost temperatures in the insulator tip high enough to cause pre ignition and piston distress so these overheating of spark plug barrels will deteriorate your ignition leads and it can increase the temperatures in the insulator tip which will be high enough to cause pre ignition and piston distress adequate air flow is important during hot weather in order to provide proper cooling of the oil cooler so in case of hot weather operation we need sufficient air so that proper cooling of the oil cooler is done oil that runs too hot breaks down and causes more friction inside the engine now if we do not have sufficient air to flow through the oil cooler then your oil will run hot and oil that runs too hot will break down and cause friction inside the engine so for that reason baffles and seals they should be periodically inspected and we need to be very careful about them one way to observe how well the seals are performing their stop gap function is to remove the cowling and look at the residues left where the cowling and seals rub together so we need to ensure that the cooling system is working properly the baffles and seals there are <coughs> no leaks in the system so one way is to see that the residues left where the cowling and seals rub together we need to check the pattern of the residue left so one continuous line of smudge means the seal is doing its job so now in case if on the cowling we are able to observe one continuous line that means your seal is doing its job if there are breaks in the line 
which might show up as unmarked area where the air was rushing through the gap. This could mean leaks and lower static pressure above the engine. Now, in case if you are not able to get the continuous line over the cowling, that means your air is leaking, is rushing out through the gap and is not providing sufficient cooling. Inspect cowl flaps or flaring openings at the rear of the cowling for excessive leakage indicated by discoloration. So, the cowl flaps, they should also be inspected for excessive leakage and for any discoloration. Now, coming to the engine cylinders, we have seen in our previous videos, we have seen the cylinders, we have seen the cooling fins on the cylinders. Now, the cooling fins, they are of utmost importance to the cooling system since they provide a means of transferring the cylinder heat to the air. Now, you can see this is the diagram of a cylinder and on top of the cylinder, you can see the fins. These fins, they provide a means of transferring the cylinder heat to the air. So, now air is directed to flow over this cylinder. The condition can mean the difference between adequate or inadequate cylinder cooling. So, these fins, the condition of the fins, this is very, very important and it can lead to adequate or inadequate cylinder cooling. The fins are inspected at each regular inspection. So, this fin, these fins, they are to be inspected at regular inspections. Fin area is the total area. So, both sides of the fin. So, both sides of the fin, since air is flowing <coughs> through the fins, so both sides of the fin, that is your total area, which is exposed to the air. During the inspection, the fins should be examined for cracks and breaks. So, we need to be very particular during the inspection about the cracks and the breaks of the cylinder fence. Small cracks are not a reason for cylinder removal. So, in case you have small cracks on the fence, they are still permissible if they are within the limits and we need not remove the cylinder. These cracks can be filed or even sometimes stop drilled to prevent any further cracking. So, in case of any crack, we can still address that problem in case if it is within the limits and we need not remove the cylinder. Rough or sharp corners on fins can be smoothed out by filing and this action eliminates a possible source of new cracks. So, any rough or sharp corner on the fin it can be smoothed out by filing it and it will eliminate a possible source of new crack. So, in case if we do not do that, if we do not sharpen out or we do not smooth out by filing that rough or sharp corner, then it can further result in some cracks. So, once the corner or the rough or sharp corner is filed, is smoothed out then that crack can be avoided. However, before reprofiling cylinder cooling fins, consult the manufacturer's service or overhaul manual for the allowable limits. So, as we have said that in case if the cracks are within the limits, then it is permissible. So, these limits we need to check from the manufacturer's manuals, service manuals or overhaul manuals. We need to check what limits have been prescribed by the manufacturer and if the damage or if the rough or sharp corner or the crack is within that limit specified by the manufacturer that the cylinder can be used. Now coming to cowlings, you can see in the figures these are your cowlings, this is your upper cowling and this is your lower cowling. This cowling, this is used to cover the engine. It is provided an aerodynamic shape so that you have smooth airflow and here you can see this is your opening, the air goes inside the cowling through this opening to provide cooling of the engine. The cowl is manufactured in removable sections. The number varies with the aircraft make and model. So, different manufacturers, they provide different types of cowling, but Mostly, they are provided in sections, in the removable sections. The installation shown in figure contains two sections that are locked together when installed. 
so this figure this is showing two sections one is the top section and one is the bottom section and the two sections they are locked at this point these are your fasteners which lock the cowling the two sections together the cowl panels made from sheet aluminium or composite material have a smooth external surface to permit undisturbed air flow over the cowling so these are made of sheet aluminium or composite material and they are provided a smooth external surface to permit undisturbed air flow over the cowling the internal construction is designed to give strength to the panel and in addition to provide receptacles for toggle latches cowl support and engine air seat so your internal construction is also designed to give strength to the panel and it further provides receptacles for the toggle latches cowl support and engine air seat cowl inspections now what are the inspections to be done on these cowlings inspect the cowling panels for scratches dent and tears in the panel so we need to check we need to inspect these cowlings for any scratch any dent or any tear or in the panel this type of damage causes weakness of the panel structure increases drag by disrupting air flow and contributes to the starting of corrosion now in case if there is any type of damage like in case if there is scratch in case if there is dent in case there is a tear at the panel then this will cause the weakness of the panel structure if this will weaken your cowling structure it will increase the drag by disrupting air flow now air flow will not be that smooth so it will increase drag and it may further contribute to the starting of corrosion so corrosion can also result the cowling panel latches should be inspected for cold rivets and loose of loose or damaged handles now the panel latches they should also be inspected in case if there are rivets that are pulled out or they are loose or damaged handle the internal construction of the panel should be examined to see that the reinforcing ribs are not cracked and that the air seal is not damaged now this internal construction of the panel this is also to be inspected to be examined at regular intervals to ensure that the reinforcing ribs they are not cracked and that your air seal is not damaged the cowl flap hinges if equipped and cowl flap hinge bondings should be checked for security of mounting and for breaks or cracks now the cowl flap hinges very important they need to be checked for security of mounting and for any crack or break these inspections are visual inspections and should be performed frequently these are all visual inspections which are to be done which are to be performed at regular intervals to ensure that the cowling is serviceable and is contributing to efficient engine cooling and regular inspections will ensure that your cowling is serviceable and is contributing to efficient engine cooling next is your cowl flap so this cooling air this is entering through the opening cooling the complete engine and warm air is coming out it is done through openings in the lower cowlings this is done through openings in the lower cowlings and they are controlled sometimes controlled by these cowl flaps these pilot operated flaps are open during high power or low speed operations letting more air through climb and taxi they will also increase the parasitic drag of the aircraft when in the open position now these cowl flaps they can be opened from a, by a control in the cockpit and are generally used during high power or low speed operations which will allow more air to enter the engine to enter the cowling and it will further increase your cooling of the engine but opening of these cowl flaps they, they will also increase the parasite drag this is structure is coming out it is not flush with the cowling it will act to drag during normal cruise and descent the cowl flaps should be closed 
So, during normal operation, during normal cruise and descent, the cowl flaps should be in a closed condition to avoid drag. But in case of high power or low speed operation, we can open these cowl flaps and further increase cooling. In the figure, you can see there is a this is your propeller and here this is your spinner. This is your spinner. This propeller spinner is also part of the cooling system as it guides the incoming ram air to the intakes. Now, this aerodynamic shape of the spinner, this will guide the intake air, this will guide the intake ram air to the intake of the engine cowling, usually to the right and left of the spinner. So, on the right and on the left of the spinner, you have the openings and this the aerodynamic shape of the spinner, this will help in directing the air to the intake openings. These intakes are square, rectangle in shape and the more modern ones are round. So, the openings on the cowling, these openings, they may be round, they may be rectangular, but in most modern aircrafts, you have round opening. These have lower drag, thus more effective by reducing the total aircraft drag. So, the aerodynamic shape of the spinner, the specially designed opening, they reduce drag. Now, fuel air mixture, fuel air mixture, this is also an important thing as far as cooling of engine is concerned. Running the engine with a richer mixture will also lower the combustion temperatures and help cool the cylinder head temperatures. So, in case if we are operating on a rich mixture, this will help in cooling the cylinder head temperature. Flying in a high power configuration should therefore be done in a full rich mixture condition. So, in case if we are flying in a high power configuration, which we should be flying in a full rich mixture condition unless you need to lean to recover the lost power due to high density altitude conditions. So, this is totally from the operation point of view, we will understand what is fuel air mixture all about in our fuel chapter, in our fuel system chapter. So, this is just to mention here that your mixture also plays an important part in cooling of the engine. Another important gauge associated with the cooling system is your CHT gauge. With air cooled engines, the CHT gauge becomes very important for monitoring temperatures. So, in order to monitor the temperature, the engine temperature, the cylinder temperatures, we have a gauge which is called a CHT gauge or a cylinder head temperature gauge. Even with the correct mixture setting when leaning, you will use this instrument in combination with fuel flow gauges if available. This is again from the operation point of view, uh, this gauge is a very important gauge as far as cooling is concerned and it is used in combination with fuel flow gauges. The need to open the cowl flaps can also be followed on the CHT gauge. Now, CHT temperature sensors are normally installed on the hottest cylinder. So, the temperature cylinder head temperature sensor, it is generally installed on the hottest cylinder. So, however, in most of the modern engines, we have CHT sensors installed on all the cylinders and we get indication about the CHT temperature for all the cylinders, which is very important from the cooling point of view. So far, we have seen what was air cooling. In our previous slides, we had seen that the piston engines, the aircraft piston engines are either air cooled or liquid cooled or we have a combination of air cooling and liquid cooling. So, now we have seen what is air cooling, let us see what is liquid cooling and in some of the systems, we have a combination of air cooling and liquid cooling. So, let us see what is liquid cooling all about. 